please join me in the responsive reading found on page 193 in the hymnal. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And if Christ is risen, he cannot be kept consistently entombed in architecture, liturgy, or tradition, but moves mysteriously from synagogue to seashore and village to village. And we must see him always afresh. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And if Christ is risen, he cannot be recast as a respecter of hypocrisies he despised but still weaves word whips to cleanse his father's house. And we must invite this judgment. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And if Christ is risen, he cannot be kept from quarantine peoples whose skin or sins excludes them, but shows up at all the wrong parties and eats with uncertified guests. And we must join these feasts. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And if Christ is risen, our world is ever unmade and ever making anew. And, and we, we must, must not involve a shrine, but must always seek a person. Beloved church, behold the victory of God, for Jesus has conquered the grave. Welcome to Second Baptist Church. I'm Ben Brown, Minister of Students, and we are so thrilled that you are here today for Resurrection Sunday, and we're thankful for all those that are watching on the live stream as well. If you're a guest with us today, we are especially thankful for your attendance and your participation in worship. You'll see a guest information card in the pew rack in front of you. If you're able to complete this card, you can then put it in the offering plate as those are passed later in the service. Death is defeated. Christ is alive and on the loose. Let us offer our thanksgiving in prayer together. Living God, by the resurrection, you broke the power of sin and death and open the way to eternal life. As the empty tomb stands witness to his triumph over death, make your church bold in testimony to enduring victory in life. As Christ was resurrected, we too are called to rise, to elevate our thoughts, to lift up our eyes, to set our minds on the things above. Praise the Lord that Christ is alive. Let our worship transform us closer to the likeness of Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Great are your works, O Lord. Those who explain them find your delight. Glorious and majestic are your deeds. Your goodness and mercy will last forever.
sustain those who are faithful, you always remember your covenant promises. You have shown your people what your strength can do. You have given us the heritage of the nations. You have sent redemption to your people. You have established your covenant forever. The fear of you, O Lord, is the beginning of wisdom. Wise are those who live by it. Let us pray. O oh God, you show us the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We praise you for the glory of creation, for the incomparable power and brilliance you demonstrated when you made all things and you called creation good. We thank you for creating humanity in your own image suiting us for a peaceful relationship with you. We thank you that although we have each gone astray from your path and fallen prey to the power of sin, you have loved us still. You have pursued us with grace. You have chased us with mercy. You have come to us in the person of Jesus Christ. We praise you for his life, ministry, and teachings, for his death on the cross and his glorious resurrection from the grave. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, God. We pray that your Spirit would fall afresh on us today, filling us with joy, peace, love, and resurrection hope. Oh God, we hear of tragedies in Baltimore, in Moscow, and around the world. We pray for your help. We hear of wars and violence in the Middle East and in the Ukraine. And elsewhere, we pray for peace. We hear of disease and illness, injuries and pain. We pray for healing. We hear of hunger and poverty, injustice and bondage. We pray for justice. We hear of heartbreak, grief, and loss, even in our own community. And we pray for grace to help in time of need. Strengthen us in the inner being through the power of your Holy Spirit and fill our community with the great consolation of togetherness in Christ. Help us all to grow in our love for you and our love for neighbor, for your glory. And now we pray as your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Let us pray together. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you thanks. For our Savior is risen from the grave, Jesus is alive, Christ the King is enthroned. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our souls are tuned to the song of salvation, your melody of mercy, your harmony of hope. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving for your kingdom come. And we pray all of this in the name of our resurrect resurrected Lord, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
I thank God for all who have led us in worship on this wonderful Easter Sunday. Today's sermon is unconventional. It takes the form of a story. It's inspired by the 20th century British literary scholar C.S. Lewis and his book entitled The Screwtape Letters. By the 20th century Swedish theologian Gustav Aulin and his book entitled Christus Victor, and by the 21st century African-American Bible scholar Brad Braxton, who emphasizes the importance of imagination in preaching. The sermon is entitled, The Gospel from Hell's Perspective, and it's based on Ephesians 1, 17 through 23, which I will now read from the New Revised Standard Version. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, in this preaching moment, I simply ask that you would help me to speak your word. Help them to hear your word. And Lord, help us all to do your word. I pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Wormwood, the head messenger of the demons, was stationed in a garden just outside Jerusalem. Hanging in an olive tree like a bat in a cave, he received a call from Hell's command center. It was Malthus, the air traffic controller of evil spirits. Malthus to Wormwood, he said. Wormwood here, I'm at the garden. And what's the status, Wormwood? Not good, he replied. That spirit of distraction you sent didn't work. He just kept praying. He's stressed, but he's focused. But the spirit of apathy you sent put his disciples right to sleep. They couldn't even stay awake to pray for him. Those spirits of apathy almost always work on his followers. Yes, interrupted Malthus, but I'm concerned about our target. I have just dispatched a spirit of fear to remind him that he could escape all this because the wilderness is only a 15-minute walk from there. He could easily abscond into the wilderness beneath the cloak of night and the authorities would never find him. The spirit of fear should be there by now. Is it working? Negative, said Wormwood. He just keeps praying. I think he knows we're after him. I heard him tell his disciples to watch and pray so they wouldn't enter into temptation. Not to worry, said Malthus. I have a backup. I've instructed our strongest spirit of selfishness to go and persuade him to save himself instead of others. That spirit should have arrived by now. Is it working? Doesn't look like it, said Wormwood. He just prayed, Father, if it is possible, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. Now he's on his feet and his eyes look fixed, Malthus. They look firm as steel. He just told his disciples to arise so they could be on their way. I I think he's going to walk right into his arrest. So he's still on track, asked Malthus. Looks that way, said Wormwood. Well, said Malthus, 
I bet the boss will come after him personally tomorrow. I don't think the boss is strong enough to overpower him, said Wormwood. Remember what happened in the wilderness about three years ago? If you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from the temple. Yes, yes, I remember, said Malthus. But the boss thinks he can take him this time. He's going to disguise himself as a bystander in the crowd and try to convince him to avoid dying on the cross. I guess we'll see how that goes, said Wormwood. Yeah, we'll see, said Malthus. The next day, Wormwood alighted on a tree near Golgotha. He called in to the command center. Malthus here, go ahead, Wormwood. I've just arrived at Golgotha, and there are demons everywhere. I sent a bunch of our forces out there, said Malthus. What's he doing? Well, he's just now coming up the hill with the crossbeam on his shoulders. He's struggling, Malthus, and demons are swarming around him like yellow jackets. Good, said Malthus. I sent demons of self-doubt, demons of mental antagonism, Demons of emotional agony, demons of bitter loneliness and more. Well, they're all here, said Wormwood, and boy, are they dogging him. The executioners are nailing his hands to the crossbeam. Now they're, they're mounting him on the cross. He looks so vulnerable up there, Malthus, so helpless, like a little lamb. Okay, said Malthus, this is when the boss thinks he'll be most prone to temptation. This is when his defenses will be weakest. Wormwood watched for the boss to appear as the crowds mocked Jesus, deriding him like middle school bullies. Wormwood scanned the faces of the many who were heckling Jesus as he hung there suspended in shame gasping for breath and groaning in pain. I see him, whispered Wormwood. The boss is here, Malthus, in person. He just slipped into the crowd, and he's yelling at Jesus, if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. There it is, boss's signature line. If you are the Son of God, uh, come down. Jesus' eyes look heavy, Malthus and his body is giving out. This is the perfect storm of temptation. He's abandoned, he's forsaken, he's forlorn, and he knows legions of angels are awaiting his command. Surely he'll be calling on them to take him down from this cross. I believe our forces are finally starting to get to him. Wait, wait, he's talking to the thief on the cross beside him. I couldn't make out what he said, but... The thief is smiling now. I've never seen anyone smile on one of these crosses before, not in all my years. What is going on? We've got to get Jesus off this cross before he dies for sins. I'll send another brigade, said Malthus. I'll make it too. Wormwood watched as Jesus faced mounting forces of evil, and the sky went dark at midday. Malthus became increasingly anxious as Jesus remained on the cross in steadfast love for humanity through three more hours of suffering. What's he doing now? asked Malthus. He's calm, said Wormwood, and his eyes look compassionate and confident. It looks like he's going to say something. It is finished? Now he's commending himself into the Father's hands. He, he just bowed his head, Malthus, and his whole body has gone limp. I, I, I think he's dead. You mean he went through with it, Malthus asked? He did, said Wormwood. This is bad, said Malthus, very bad. Take note of where they bury him. Mark the spot well, because we have got to keep him in that grave. At least the demons you sent after the disciples made them scatter. P 
Peter denied Jesus three times in a row, said Wormwood. They are totally demoralized now. They're all messed up. Hardly any of them showed up at the crucifixion. Their movement is in shambles. There's no chance of it surviving if we can keep Jesus in the grave. Right, said Malthus. And that's where we need to focus all of our energy. That night, Wormwood watched carefully as Joseph of Arimathea buried Jesus in a tomb outside Jerusalem, said a prayer, and then went on his way. The next day, the boss stormed into Hell's command center. Malthus scrambled to his feet, as did his associates, standing at attention like soldiers before a general. Listen up, fools, the boss shouted. We cannot lose this battle. He may have chosen God's will in the garden. He may have died on the cross. But if we can keep him in that grave, nothing that he said or done will matter one bit. His life will be a pitiful memory, and his death will be nothing more than another pathetic victim perishing at the hands of the empire. If we keep him in the grave, we will retain our power. But if he rises as he has threatened, our reign will be in jeopardy. Hell will be foiled. Sin's stronghold will be broken. Death's grip will be loosened. I will stand defeated. God and humanity will be reconciled. People will walk in freedom and forgiveness and love for neighbor and peace. They'll do justice and practice mercy and walk with God. Jesus' followers will share in his resurrection power in this life and in the life to come. It will be altogether repulsive, a totally repugnant, absolutely devastating to our cause. Therefore, we've got to take every possible measure to ensure that Jesus stays in that grave. If we can keep him there until Monday, we will have prevailed. We will have thwarted the plan of salvation. We will have conquered the forces of hope, goodwill, justice, and peace. Malthus, yes sir, Malthus said, get on the horn. I want all of our strongest forces at Jesus' grave. Call the demon that confronted Jesus in the synagogue. Tell him we need him to confront Jesus again. Call the evil spirit that kept that woman bent over for 18 years until Jesus healed her. Maybe that spirit can help us keep Jesus down too. Call the demon that troubled that man with deafness and muteness until Jesus healed him. Let's give him another crack at the Christ. Call the demon that harassed that little boy until Jesus cast it out. Call the demon that possessed that Syrophoenician girl until Jesus made her well. Call all seven demons that hounded Mary Magdalene until she met Jesus. Call the whole legion of demons that tormented the man in the garrisons until Jesus ran them off. Call all the spirits of discouragement. Call all the spirits of apathy. Call all the spirits of selfishness. Call all the spirits of self-loathing. Call the spirits of guilt. Envy and pride call spirits of bitterness, spirits of demoralization, spirits of racism, spirits of classism, spirits of xenophobia, and spirits of despair. Call the spirits of tribalism, spirits of division, Malthus, and call the spirits of rivalry. Call the rulers and authorities too. Call the rulers of repression. Call the authorities of oppression. Call the powers that permeate social structures to perpetuate injustice and precipitate dehumanization. Call all the principalities that prop some people up with hubris and hold other people down with bondage. Call all the strongholds, all the dominions, all the cosmic forces of evil. Put out an APB, Malthus. We don't need anybody anywhere else in the world. We need everybody at Jesus' tomb ready for battle. There's no way he can conquer us all at the same time. He is quite strong, said Malthus. Especially in his weakness. True, the boss replied, but I'll be there myself to help. And I'm going to put in a call to sin and death and ask them to meet us there. Malthus swallowed hard. He spoke tremblingly. You're going to call death himself? Yes, said the boss. Death may be the only power strong enough to hold Jesus down. 
And I don't want to take any chances. Remember, if we lose this battle, we're done for. I'll get to work right away, said Malthus. And Malthus, said the boss, I want you calling the shots tomorrow. Don't let me down. On Sunday morning, around 4 or 5 a.m., all the powers of hell had gathered in Jesus' tomb. Never has a grave been so hounded by demons. They were crawling all over Jesus' body like ants on a dead caterpillar. Wormwood could hardly see Jesus for all the evil spirits covering him. He called in to the command center. Malthus, he said. Go ahead, Wormwood, came the reply. I'm inside Jesus' tomb, and it is the most amazing scene in here. Truly inspiring. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like every evil power in the entire cosmos is present and accounted for. The boss is here. Sin is here. Even death is here, crouched over in the corner. Good, said Malfoy. Now, remember, if we can... Wait, said Wormwood. What is it, said Malfoy? The pointer finger on Jesus' right hand. It, it's, it's twitching, said Wormwood. Demons are flying off of it. That finger has the power of a lion. Now his whole right hand is twitching. He just threw hundreds of demons against the wall, and now his, his left hand is twitching. Everyone stand firm, said Malthus across the wire. Stay calm. This is the battle we've been waiting for. All you demons holding down his arms, hold firm. All you evil spirits holding down his legs, hold firm. Don't let him move another inch. Malthus said Wormwood. His eyelids just opened, and there's fire in his eyes, burning with a blaze like I've never seen. Don't be afraid, said Malthus. He can't conquer all of us all by himself. Work together now and hold him down. He's lifting his head off the ground, said Wormwood. He's looking at all the principalities and powers swarming his body. He just moved his left leg, oh, and kicked thousands of demons against the wall. Hold your ground, said Malthus. Everybody stand firm. He's done the same thing with his right leg, Wormwood said. And now he's waving his arms back and forth, slinging evil spirits all over the place. This does not look good, Malthus. Oh no, what, said Malthus. He's on his feet. On his feet, yes, yeah, said Wormwood. He's brushing himself off like he just had a good night's sleep. He's flicking our strongest demons off of him like they're breadcrumbs falling from a table. I've never seen power like this, Malthus. Never. Spirits of discouragement are no match for him. Spirits of self-loathing and rage and pride have no power around him. Spirits of guilt and shame fall broken before him. Spirits of hatred, oppression, and violence cower in his present. Spirits of injustice flee. Spirits of tribalism and division shrivel. Now it's just sin, the boss, and death standing between Jesus and the door of this tomb. Sin, said Malthus across the wire. I need you to step up and take down the target. I know you haven't had any luck with him before, but I need you to take him down. Use whatever means necessary. Sin's going after him, said Wormwood. Jesus just picked him up with one nail-scarred hand. Oh, and slammed him against the wall. The power of sin is broken, Malthus. I'm telling you, I have never seen power like this. Boss, screamed Malthus across the wire, hardly believing he was talking to the boss this way. You have got to take the target out. It's up to you in death, or we are going to lose this battle. Oh, said Wormwood. Jesus just stomped the boss into the dirt. Boss is wiggling beneath Jesus' heel like a fish. The boss can't do anything, Malthus. It's like Jesus has the full power of God right now. Nobody can stop him. What are we going to do? We still have death, said Malthus. Death is our Goliath. Are you sure that's the analogy you want to use, said Wormwood? Well, death is our strongest force of all. 
death, Malthus screamed across the wire, hardly believing he was talking to death like this. You're our last hope to keep Jesus in the grave. We need you to win this one for all the forces of evil. Take him out. Death just jumped out of the corner and attacked him, said Wormwood. He and Jesus are wrestling all over this tomb. Arms and legs are flying everywhere. This is a contest for the ages. They are turning and twisting and tussling with epic power. Look at them go. Who's winning, said Malthus. Jesus has death on the ground, said Wormwood. But death has a hold of Jesus' legs, a tight grip. Death is trying to hold him down, Malthus shouted. Hold him down, death. Hold on to him. If you lose your grip on Jesus, you lose your grip on the entire human race. Jesus is moving toward the stone, Wormwood said. Death is still holding his legs, but Jesus is making some progress. Death's trying to hold him back, but he can't. Death can't hold him, Malthus. You have to hold him, screamed Malthus across the wire. Come on, Death. You have to hold him. There's nothing Death can do, said Wormwood. Jesus is too much. Death is no match for him. Death can't hold him, Malthus. Death can't hold him. He, he's walking freely now, and oh, oh no. What is it, said Malthus. He's rolling the stone away. He's He's out. Out! Yes, Malthus. Jesus is on the loose. I'm afraid he's going to give his power and his spirit to his disciples. We're done for, Malthus. We are all done for. And so Jesus stepped out of the tomb into a new day. And he came to his followers and he said to them, do not fear. For lo, I am with you always. Amen. If you have never put your faith in our amazing Savior, who overcomes the powers of sin and death to save us. Won't you come this morning and put your faith in Christ? If you would like to be baptized, we have a baptismal service planned for next month and another baptismal service planned for the month of May. Won't you come forward this morning to present yourself for baptism? Or if you'd like to join the Second Baptist Church and become an official part of our community of faith as we Follow Christ in love and in spiritual power. And won't you come forward during this last hymn? At this time, everyone is welcome to stand and sing and respond as the Spirit leads.
I'll ask you to remain standing for just a brief moment, please. I want to introduce you to a couple I know some of you uh, have met. This is AC and Brenda Rome. They are fellow Christians, fellow Baptists. They've been worshiping with us for a few months now, and today they come desiring to join our church by transfer of letter. And let all who rejoice with them in this wonderful decision say amen. 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 Welcome to Second Baptist Church, Brenda and AC. We are blessed and delighted to have you. Yes, indeed. It has been a joy to worship with you all on this glorious Easter Sunday. And now, while it's time for our worship service to conclude, it's time for our worship and our service to continue. For church is not so much a place to which we come as a place from which we go. And as we go from this place today, let us go with great confidence that Christ has overpowered all the strength of sin and all the muscle of death and that his love is greater than all the evil forces put together. And let us go seeking to share God's love with all we encounter along life's way. And may this be our benediction from Romans 8. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 